Hey boys and girls, we're so excited that you've joined us today. We look forward to bringing you a children's church lesson each and every week filled with singing, scripture memory, a mission story, and a lesson right from the Word of God. Each week we'll give you a paper that has blanks to fill out, your memory verse for the week, some fun stuff, as well as some scriptures that you can read each and every day. As we go through this plan this summer, we want to learn, we want to praise, and we want to grow together. Hey, it's time for New Life Baptist Children's Church. All right, boys and girls, our very first song is found in the Bible. It's in Psalms chapter 19, and it's verses 7 through 11. So Brother Ethan's going to pop the words up on the screen, and you sing along with us as we sing together. The law of the Lord is perfect.
girls, but let's do a quick review before we get to our newest part of our mission story. Are you nice and comfortable? Do you remember the country that our story takes place at? It's this big one right here in the center of our picture. Russia, and you have to say it like that with me. Ready? Russia. So if we're looking at it, we have the island of England over here. We have Spain and France over in this area. And then sure enough, right here, what do we have? Russia, okay? So that's where our story takes place. And you remember at the beginning of our story, it was a Russian family, and they were farmers. And life was normal for them. They farmed, they went to school, they even went to church. But was it like our church? No, it was not. They were called Russian Orthodox. And this is what their priest wore. wore. And uh, you can tell we talked about how it would be funny if our preacher was wearing something like this too. And on every church day, he would come to their house. And do you remember what game they would play? It was the game where the loser, what would happen to them? They would get a pile of cards thrown at their noses. And if you look at the preacher and over here at their father's nose, you notice that it's really red. And what do you think's in their cups? liquor they were drinking alcohol the preacher was drinking alcohol so they really really were different type of religion weren't they well remember after a while of living there in their village of russia they um their farm was taken away from them they didn't have any land their house was lost so they had to move they went on a train and they were going to travel to a nearby village and hopefully start over a new life but do you remember what happened to dad on their way he became sick with a disease called cholera. And remember, they were in the train station spending the night, and Pasha and Shura, that's the boy and girl, the next morning their father was taken away by the soldiers to the hospital. Did they ever see their father again? No, they did not. Do you remember how they went and they slept under a gate? It was by a fence. And Shura and Pasha stayed there at night and um, they would try to go to the hospital the next day to check on their father and they were never able to see him. And then who got sick? Their mother got sick with the same disease and she was rushed to the hospital as well. And you remember within just a few short, uh, sh a few short days they were both um, dead. And so Shur and Pasha, after they discovered that their parents were dead, do you remember where they went next? Can you see it in the picture? They went to the graveyard, the cemetery, and they asked the man, please can you help us find our parents so that we can say goodbye to them? And the man laughed at them and he pushed them away and said, do you know how many bodies are here? There's no way I know who your parents are. And he wouldn't let them come inside. And Shur and Pasha were so upset, but they knew they had to keep going. They couldn't just stay in that village. So they decided to go to the next village and hopefully make it to a, a nice place where they could live. But do you remember what happened once they were traveling? Let me get to the next picture. Shura and Pasha were stopped by a soldier and they knew that if this soldier knew they were orphans that they would be separated and put in an orphanage and they begged and they begged but what happened they were forced to go into the orphanage and so Shura and Pasha gave each other a hug and they said that they loved each other and they were taken away well Pasha at the end of our story, he was taken to the orphanage. And here's a picture of it. And remember, we talked about how on the outside it looks really pretty, but was it really nice on the inside? No. He was greeted by 300 little boys inside this house. And remember, they had to fight for everything they got, even the food. So they were, it was not a nice situation at all, was it? I remember at the end of last week's lesson, what did uh, Pasha decide? that he was going to run away. And that's where we're picking up. So I hope you're nice and comfy and you're ready to listen to this week's lesson. Well, Pasha just couldn't stand it anymore. He waited until it was pitch black outside and he waited till he knew everyone in his room was asleep. And as carefully as he could, he got out of his bed. He put on his shoes. He grabbed what little pairs of clothes that he had. He put it in a little bag and he opened the window so carefully, so quietly, and he started to climb down the, um, the, the window outside until he got to the floor, to the ground. And as quickly as he could, he ran off towards the woods. He ran for four miles, boys and girls. That's a long way to run. I don't think I could run that long. And finally, he got to the very edge of the woods. And he knew that if he went inside the woods that he would get lost and probably die. So he decided to stay right on the edge of the woods. And all night long, Pasha was walking through those woods. Can you imagine how cold it must have been? He must have been starving to death as well. Well, sure enough, the next day he came to a, a nearby village and he decided that he needed to find some type of food. 
Well, sure enough, there was a store that wasn't too far away. And Pasha snuck up. And do you know what he did? He ran over, grabbed a loaf of bread, and as quickly as he could, he ran back towards the woods. What do we call that, boys and girls? Stealing. And that's a sin, isn't it? But at that point, Pasha didn't care. He knew that it was wrong, but he didn't care. He had to have some food. So boys and girls, he traveled for two days like that, stayed on the edge of the woods, and went and tried to find some bread or some food, and then he would run back as quickly as he could to the woods. Well, finally, on day number three, Pasha was exhausted. He was so tired. So do you know what he did? He fell down by a tree, and he was out quick as lightning, fast asleep. And boys and girls, I don't know how long he must have slept, but it was a long time. And do you know what woke him up? Somebody was hitting him with their feet. Whoa! Pasha woke up quickly. What do you want? What do you want? He said. Well, he looked up to discover three big men. And not only that, these men had guns, they had swords, they had knives all over them from the top of their body all the way down to their feet. Man, they were armed as if they were the, fighting the soldiers. And Pasha looked up at them in fear and said, please, please don't hurt me. Well, these men started to ask him questions. Who are you? Where are your parents? Why are you here? Have you done something wrong? Well, Pasha boys and girls was looking at him back and forth as they were asking those questions. And he decided he wasn't going to answer because if they didn't like the answer, they might kill him. Well, sure of them, one spoke, sure enough, one of them spoke up and said, Boy, tell me your name. It's Pasha, he said. And he gulped really quickly, hoping that they wouldn't hurt him. And so they looked at him and they said, Pasha, what happened to you? Why are you here in the woods? And boys and girls, he explained to them what happened, how his parents had died and he was taken away from his sister and he went into an orphanage and how he hated it so much he had to get away. And he had been traveling for three days until finally he just passed out from being so tired. Well, boys and girls, do you know what they did? They reached down their hand and they picked him up. Well, my goodness, they said, you really are a strong boy, determined to make it on your own and leave the orphanage. You sound like our kind of guy. Why don't you come with us? Well, boys and girls, they picked up Pasha, put him on a horse, and started traveling through the woods. Oh, my goodness, Pasha thought for a minute, what have I gotten myself into? What is going to happen to me? Well, boys and girls, it seemed like they were traveling forever on the horses until finally they came to a path in the woods. And there was a big man that was sitting on a horse. Who is this, he said. We found him in the woods, they said, and he's an orphan all by himself. And we thought he might could help us out. The man looked him over. He said, what's your name, boy? It's Pasha, he said once again. Hmm, you'll have to come with us. And you know what he did? He picked up Pasha and put him on his own horse. And once again, they took off through the woods. Boys and girls, it was a deep, deep, deep way through the woods. Pasha just knew if anyone tried to follow them that they definitely would have gotten lost. And that was the plan. You see, boys and girls, when Pasha came to their village, he realized who these people were. Are you ready to find out? Well, sure enough, it seemed like hours and hours of traveling until finally they came in the middle of the woods to this village. And once they got to the village, Pasha was looking all around and he saw about 20 men. And once again, they were armed with knives and guns and things like that. And there were women as well. He didn't see any kids though. And as Pasha was walking by, they were all gathering around him. It's like they had never seen a kid before. Well, sure enough, the leader jumped off his horse, and he <clears throat> and so everyone stopped, and they were listening to him. And he said, we found this boy, and he's an orphan. He says his name is, uh, what did you say your name is again? And he looked up, and he said, Pasha. No, 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 tell us what your last name is. He said, Tikomorov. It means quiet peace. Do you know what happened, boys and girls? Every one of the people in the village started busting out laughing. <laughs> peace, quiet, that doesn't sound like us at all. Well, Pacha was looking at him like, what in the world are they talking about? And the leader said, your name will no longer be Pasha Tukomarov. From now on, you will be hmm, Greasy. Greasy? What kind of name is that? Well, sure enough, boys and girls, he explained why. It's because you have greasy all over. Your hair is greasy. Your face is greasy. You're dirty. You need a bath. So from now on, your name shall be Greasy. And boys and girls, Pasha was no more. For now, he had become greasy. And he was now part of a family of thieves. You see,
see, boys and girls, this village right here was a group of thieves, robbers, and they hid deep, deep, deep into the woods so that no one could find them. And Pasha didn't know that at the time. Well, boys and girls, before long, everyone loved Pasha. He was the life of the party. As soon as the thieves would come back from their adventure, he would run over and try to find all the things that they had stolen from people. And oh, they would laugh as Pasha would hold up the things and he thought it was this big old piece of treasure. They thought he was just so funny. Well, boys and girls, do you know what happened? Before long, Pasha forgot about sin. He forgot that he had learned that sin is wrong. You guys, can you tell me what sin is? You know this. Anything that we think, say, or do that displeases God. Pasha knew those things. He had forgotten them. And before long, he didn't think anything about stealing. Boys and girls, these people weren't only thieves. They were also murderers. Well, before long, boys and girls, Pasha became like part of the family. And look at this, boys and girls. No longer is Pasha a little kid your age. He's now 16 years old. Eight years had passed. And now, boys and girls, Pasha was not only the life of the party, he was the party itself. He was part of the thieves. And not only that, he was one of the best ones. He was so clever. He knew exactly how to trap people. He knew exactly what to look for. And boys and girls, he was really good at it. So hadn't he really forgotten what sin was? Yeah, he really did. Well, it was on one adventure, boys and girls, that Pasha or Greasy, his life was about to change. You see, boys and girls, Greasy and his men had decided that they were going to go hunting through the woods to see who else they could rob. And they just so happened to pass upon these two men that are on their knees. Well, sure enough, as they, um, they, got, they captured them, they bound their hands and their feet, they had them kneeling on the ground, and they robbed them blind. They took everything that was off their horses. They took their clothes. They took their money. They took their boots. And they were laughing their heads off. And Greasy, he was the leader, boys and girls. Well, those two men on their knees, they were looking up, begging, please, please don't kill us. Boys and girls, I'm sad to say that Greasy, he didn't give it a second thought. He snapped his fingers, and those two men were killed instantly. Well, they were all laughing, smiling as they jumped on their horses and the band of thieves ran back to their village. And sure enough, boys and girls, once they arrived at their village, they started opening the bags to see what they had uh, gotten from these two men. And inside there was money, like you would think, and there was some jewelry and things like that. But there were also books, two books. Well, ha, everyone just threw them to the side. Nobody wanted a book. But Greasy decided that he would keep them. So he picked them up and put them inside of his pants, and he decided later on he would look at them. Well, he didn't think anything else of it, boys and girls. They ate dinner and played games. But finally that night, Greasy decided that he would open up these books and read what was inside. And one of them was a New Testament. You guys know what that is. And as soon as Greasy picked it up and he started looking through the pages, it was like he was a little kid again. He remembered all those lessons that he had learned about sin. And boys and girls, it didn't hit him yet. But Greasy was reading through those, and I want to read directly what the scripture said. Are you ready? It was found in Romans chapter 3. It says, There is none that seeketh after God. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps, that's a snake, is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Boys and girls, there was one phrase in there that really got greasy to thinking. Do you know which one it was? The phrase that said, their feet are swift to shed blood. Boys and girls, greasy had shed blood that day, didn't he? He ordered those two men to be killed. And boys and girls, just like that, Greasy remembered that stealing and that killing was wrong. And oh, boys and girls, he got convicted. You guys know what that is. I think of it as when somebody's knocking on the door. It's like Jesus knocking on your heart saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Don't do that. Don't tell a lie. Don't you steal from your brother or your sister. Have you ever guys felt convicted like that before? I know I have. Well, boys and girls, do you know what? Pasha could not sleep one little bit. 
he just kept tossing and turning until finally he just decided, you know what, I'm going to get that book out again and keep reading. And he opened it up to the very beginning of the Bible, and this is what he saw. The man that he had stolen from, he had killed, wrote inside of it, and this is what it said. Are you listening? May 15th, 1898, the day of my conversion to the Lord. On this day, he forgave me of my sins and washed me with his holy blood. What did this mean, Greasy thought? He turned the pages and kept reading. There was another verse. Know ye not that unrighteousness nor thieves shall inherit the kingdom of God? Boys and girls, his heart was burdened. He was convicted. I'm a thief, he thought. I've killed. I shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I won't get to go to heaven, he thought. Oh, there was definitely no sleeping now until he found another verse. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of your, our God. What? He thought. I can be washed. Maybe I can get my sins forgiven me. Well, he could not put the New Testament down now. He kept reading through all the pages. And do you know what story he found? Do you guys know the story of Zacchaeus? The wee little man, the wee little man was he. Do you know what he was? He was a thief. And Zacchaeus read the story about how, uh, and uh, Greasy read the story about how Zacchaeus, he knew he was a sinner and he got saved. And not only that, he gave money back to those that he stole from. What in the world, Greasy thought? And he kept flipping through the pages and reading more. And he came to the story of Jesus dying on the cross. I know you guys know that story. But that wasn't what really interested him. You see, the part that interests him were those two thieves that were hung on the cross beside him. And one of them, Jesus spoke up and said, Today you shall be in paradise with me. Oh my goodness, Greasy thought. He got saved. A thief got saved. Boys and girls, that whole night Greasy read through the Bible, that New Testament. The whole night, that's what he did. And the next morning, do you know what? Greasy was no longer the life of the party. Now he was really quiet. And it's like he was thinking all the time. Well, his friends noticed a difference in him, and they said, Greasy, what's up with you? What's changed? And for a few days, he didn't say anything. Until finally, they just couldn't stand it anymore, and they grabbed him by the shoulders and said, Greasy, tell us what's wrong right now. Well, boys and girls, Greasy looked at them, and he said, Do you remember when we, um, when we stole from those two men in the woods and we took um, their stuff? Well, inside of it, I found a book. And this book has some really interesting things in it, and I don't think that I can be a thief anymore. I don't think that I can kill people anymore. Do you know what, boys and girls? Those other thieves, his friends, they all started looking at him, and some of them laughed, but some of them got angry. What do you mean you can't steal anymore? Bring this book to me right now. And they all started laughing and, and chanting along, burn it, burn it, burn it, they were saying. Oh, my goodness. Were they going to burn the New Testament? Were they not going to let Greasy read it anymore? Boys and girls, you're going to have to come back next week to find out what happens to Greasy. Hi, Detective Dan here. Your mission in this game, should you choose to accept it, is to memorize the pictures we show you. Then, I will take one away. Your job is to tell me which picture is missing. Let's get started. Look at these cabinets with locks. Which door is missing a lock? The green one. Great job. Memorize these animal footprints. Now, which one is missing? That's right. The bird. Great job. Look at the shapes on this wall. Which shape is missing? Yes! It's the heart. You're doing great. Memorize these pictures. Which picture is missing? That's correct! It's the dog! Look at these keys.
Which key is missing? The red one. Nice job. Take a look at this. Which item is missing? The hamburger. Great job. You fulfilled your mission. found in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. We're going to pop it up right here on the screen next to me. The verse says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let's talk about this verse for just a minute. Call unto me. This verse here is talking about not calling someone on the phone, although we're going to use that motion here in a minute. It's talking about us praying to God. If we'll pray to God, the next part of the verse says, He will answer us. Boys and girls, that's a promise from God that He will answer us when we pray to Him. So let's do some motions to help us learn this Bible verse. So our very first part of the verse here, call unto me. We're going to do a motion like we're talking on the phone. So call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Can you do those motions with me? Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let's try that one more time. Now, boys, I want to see your muscles really big, and ladies, maybe use um, a girly voice when you talk on the phone. All right, here we go. Ready? Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Boys and girls, get up on your feet. It is time to go over our fun song, Jesus Love is a Bubbling Over, okay? Those are the motions right there. Let's do it slow one time. Ready? Jesus Love is a Bubbling Over. Jesus Love is a Bubbling Over. Jesus love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. You remember it? Okay, let's do it a little bit faster with emotions. Ready? Jesus love is a bubbling over. Jesus love is a bubbling over. Jesus love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. Good job. Okay, now each time we do a different sound. Okay, so remember the first one is ooh. Love is a bubbling over. Here we go. Ooh, love is a bubbling over. Ooh, love is a bubbling over. Ooh, love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. Ooh, ah. Ready? Ooh, ah, bubbling over. Ooh, ah, bubbling over. Ooh, ah, bubbling over. Hallelujah. This is my favorite one yet. Ooh, ah, shh, like that. All right, here we go. Ooh, ah, shh, over. Ooh, ah, shh, over. Ooh, ah, shh, over. Hallelujah. And the last one is ooh, ah, shh, woo. And you got to make a face like that, okay? Lean backward, woo. All right, here we go. Ooh, ah, shh, woo. Ooh, ah, shh. Woo, ooh, ah, sh, woo, hallelujah. Pretty good job, guys. Now, I want to try one more thing. The last time we do, we go through it, and you just go bubble, 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 bubbling over like that. And you can go crazy. You can go over here. You can go over there. If you're doing it with brother and sister, you can bump into brother and sister if you want to, okay? Just have fun with it. Here we go. Bubble, 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 bubbling over. Bubble, 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 bubbling over. Bubble, 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 bubbling over. Hallelujah. Good job, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible lesson. Grab your Bible and let's find Jeremiah 
chapter 33 and verse number 3. The same verse we were looking at for our memory verse just a few moments ago. Jeremiah, if you find the book of Psalms in the Old Testament, that's that really big book. And then you start going to the right, it's just a few books later, right after the big book of Isaiah. So find Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. If you watched last week's lesson, you remember that we're talking about how to have a spiritually super summer. We hope you're having a super summer filled with a lot of fun. But we want to have a spiritually super summer and grow closer to God. Last week we talked about our first ingredient in a spiritually super summer. Do you remember what it is? No, it's not sleeping in. That, that, that is a good thing to do during the summer, and it's not, not tubing on the lake, although that's fun too. No, the, the first ingredient, that's right, it's the Word of God. And we talked about last week that every day we need to be in the Word of God. We need to read it, we need to meditate or think about it, we need to listen to it, and we need to obey it. Have you been doing that this week? On each one of your sheets of paper that we give you when we come to see you or when you get them at church, it has a daily Bible reading list. You can go through each and every day and get in God's Word and listen and have a spiritually super summer. Well, today we want to talk about ingredient number two in our spiritually super summer. And it's found in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3. God's Word says this, and maybe some of you guys have already got it memorized. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Our second ingredient in our spiritually super summer is prayer. You know, guys, as you learn how to get uh, closer to the Lord, one of the ways that we do that is by praying. When we read our Bible, God speaks to us, and when we pray, we can speak back to God. You know, praying is just as simple as talking to God, just like you would talk to a friend, or you would talk to your parents, or you would talk to Brother Ethan. You can talk to God. And I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer. Number one, if you got your blanks and you're, you're taking notes, you got your pen or your pencil, and you're taking notes with me, your crayon or marker, whatever you got, notice point number one in your notes. First of all, when we're talking about prayer, God wants us to pray. Did you know that? God wants you to pray. In fact, He has given us an invitation to pray. What's an invitation? Oh, you think about maybe you've been invited to a birthday party before, right? One of your friends was having a party, and so they gave you an invitation because they wanted you to come. Maybe uh, Brother Ethan was having a, a get-together at his house, and we were going to do s'mores. And so I invited you to come over to my house. And what I'm saying is I want you to come. I want you to be there. I want you to do something uh, with me. Well, did you know that God has given us an invitation to prayer? He wants you to pray. It's something that He wants you to do. Maybe sometimes in, in your praying you think, well, I don't want to bother God. He's so busy. I mean, there's all kinds of people, and, and I don't want to bother Him. I'm just a little kid. But no, guys, God wants us to pray. In fact, there was a famous preacher. His name was D.L. Moody. Yeah, just like the city right down the road, Moody. That was his last name. And he said this. He said, Some people think God does not like to be troubled with our constant coming and asking. But then he said this. The way to trouble God is not to come at all. Do you know, boys and girls, that you never trouble God when you come to Him and pray. You say, but Brother Ethan, I have all these big problems and, and, and I don't want to bother God. No, you won't bother God. He invites us to pray. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. So the first thing about prayer in our spiritually super summer that we've got to know is that God wants us to pray. Number two, God hears us when we pray. Boy, isn't that cool. You say, well, I'm just so little. I'm just six, seven, eight years old. You think God hears me? He does. Isn't that so cool? In fact, boys and girls, that is a prayer promise. God promises to hear us. In 1 John chapter 5, and verse 14, the Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He 
heareth us. In the book of Jeremiah, that same book that we started our lesson in this morning, in chapter 29 and verse 12, it says this, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Hearken. What does that mean, hearken? Well, it's kind of like this. You ever been uh, calling out to your mom and dad, you know, and you were trying to get their attention, and maybe they were real busy, so they kind of weren't paying attention to you, or they were doing something else, and then you screamed their name real loud, Mom! Right? And all of a sudden, she looked up because she thought maybe something was wrong, or you screamed out, Dad! And all of a sudden, you had their attention. Boy, they were listening to you real good. Maybe you got in trouble, but they were listening to you, right? They were hearkening unto you. You know what, boys and girls, when we call out to God, we don't have to yell. All we have to do is speak to Him, and He hearkens unto us. He listens to us. Did you know, boys and girls, that God is never too busy to hear you? You ever been trying to call somebody, and maybe you dialed their number, and, and you pushed the green send or, or call, and, and then you got a busy signal because they were talking to somebody else, and you couldn't get them. Or maybe you called them, and they didn't answer. Did you know God is never too busy uh, to hear you? And He's never too far away to hear you. He hears us when we pray. The first truth about prayer in our spiritually super summer is that God wants us to pray. Can you say that with me? You ready? God wants us to pray. The second truth is that God hears us when we pray. Can you say that with me? God hears us when we pray. The third truth is that God answers prayer. Boy, isn't that awesome. Not only does God listen to us, but God answers us. That's what our verse said. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Psalm chapter 91 and verse 15 says, uh, it says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You saying, Brother Ethan, you're telling me that if I pray, God's going to hear me. Yep, that's right. And whatever I ask for, God's just going to magically give it to me. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. You know, sometimes God's answer isn't always the answer that we would like, but He always answers us. And in fact, boys and girls, I think there's four different ways that God answers us, okay? And I'm going to give them to you, and they'll be right there in your notes. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes we may ask God, God, would you please heal my mom? Or God, would you please help my family? And God, God answers that prayer and God works. God, would you please help me to get this thing in my life? And, and sometimes God says yes. In fact, boys and girls, Miss Bethany, my wife, she was praying for a minivan because our family is expanding and growing and we're running out of room and we needed a bigger car. And Miss Bethany was praying, and did you know that God gave us a minivan? Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes, number two, God says no. You say, are you serious? Is that really an answer? It is an answer, boys and girls. And when God says no, he always has a better yes in store for us. But sometimes God knows that what we're asking for is not what is best for us. It's not what we need right then. So God answers us sometimes by saying no. Number three, sometimes God says wait. Maybe we're asking for something and God, would you help me to get this or to be this or be able to do this? And God knows that we don't need that right now. And so God says wait, maybe later. The fourth answer that God gives us sometimes, I think, boys and girls, this is an amazing thing. Sometimes when we pray and we ask God, God says He gives us something better. Something other than what we ask for, but it is better. And here's what we can always know. God always knows what is best for us. And He always does what is best for us. God answers our prayer. Did you know that? So we've got these truths here, okay, about prayer. In our spiritually super summer, praying is talking to God, okay? And what's our truths? Number one, God wants us to pray. Number two, God hears us when we pray. Number three, God answers our prayer. And number four, and this is our last truth about prayer, we should pray. We should pray. Even you, you may be just a little boy or girl, but God wants you to pray, and we should pray every single day. 
You say, well, Brother Ethan, yeah, I, I pray before I eat, you know, before I stuff down my Pop-Tart or my bean burrito, you know, I pray and, and give it some time to cool off. But you know what? We should do other praying besides just for our food. You know, we should pray for our family. We can pray for our friends. We can pray for our leaders in our country. We can pray for people that might be sick or going through a hard time. Maybe someone passes away and we can pray for their family. We should pray. We should have a time when we pray. We should have a place that we pray. We should have a list. You know, sometimes I forget things. Anybody else like that? I, I forget where I put my phone. I forget where I put my keys. I mean, I forget all kinds of things. Did you know that just writing down some things to pray for can help you remember? Maybe you can make a list on your phone if you have one, or if you have a piece of paper, maybe you can make a list right on your notes that are in front of you and just say, I want to pray for this friend. I want to pray for mom and for dad. Pray for my, my big brother. I, I want to pray for my church. And you can pray about things. We should pray. You know, there's a story about a man named George Mueller. George Mueller. He was a real guy. He lived a while back ago, and he lived in England. Yeah, across the ocean in the in a country called England. And George Mueller and his wife, they started orphanages for kids who whose parents uh, either had died or they didn't want them anymore. And, and, and they had an orphanage, just like uh, our missionary story, just like that little boy and girl were staying in an orphanage. And George Mueller, on one day, they didn't have any food for the kids the next morning. Can you imagine that? They had all these kids that they were supposed to feed, and, and, and they had run out of food, and they didn't have any money to go buy them. And so you know what George Mueller did? He prayed. He prayed, and he asked God, he told God, Lord, we need food for these boys and girls, and we don't have any money. God, could you supply uh, for us and for these boys and girls? Well, did you know the next morning, after George Mueller had gone to bed, the next morning he heard a, a knock at the door, and when he got up, there was a man standing there with a load of bread. And, and, and George Mueller began to talk to him. And this man was a baker, and he said, Mr. Mueller, I don't know what happened, but I felt like God told me in the middle of the night to get up and start baking bread. Could you use this bread? Did God answer George Mueller's prayer? He did, didn't he, boys and girls? But it gets even better than that. A milk truck that was driving by the orphanage broke down in front of the orphanage. And so the milkman came and he knocked on Mr. Mueller's door and he said, Mr. Mueller, I've got to fix my milk truck and I need to unload some of this milk so that I can work on it and you and the boys and girls here at the orphanage can have all the milk that you want. Oh my goodness, boys and girls. Did God answer George Mueller's prayer? He did. You know something, boys and girls? George Mueller, they said, had over 3,000 pages of prayer requests. And in those 3,000 pages, there were over 30,000 times that Jesus had answered George Mueller's prayer. Wow! That's incredible! You know, wouldn't it be cool if maybe this week you had three different prayer requests and if God answered one of those how amazing would that be? Boys and girls, to have a spiritually super summer, in fact, to have a spiritually super life, you need the Word of God and you also need to pray. And remember those truths we learned about prayer. Number one, God wants us to pray. Can you say it with me? Ready? God wants us to pray. Number two, God hears us when we pray. Can you say that? God hears us when we pray. Number three, God answers us when we pray. Ready? Number three, God answers us when we pray. And number four, we should pray. Can you say that one with me? We should pray. Hey, this week, as you read the Bible, be sure you take time every single day to pray, to thank God for His blessings, and to ask God for your needs. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the promise that you've given us, Lord, that you've given us an invitation that we can come and pray to you. And when we pray to you, you hear us. And you not only hear us, Lord, but you answer us. I pray for our boys and girls, maybe even there'll be adults that will listen to this lesson. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to learn to pray. May we get in your word each day this week, Lord, and be reading our Bibles, meditating and thinking about it and listening to what you have to say and obeying. But, Lord, may we also be praying thanking you for your blessings and your provisions for us, and also asking you for our needs. Lord, we love you. 
I pray that you speak to our hearts from your word, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we hope you enjoyed Children's Church today. Hey, if we can be a help to you in any way, be sure to call the number below, or you can email us. Maybe some of you guys know how to do that. You can send us an email, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Maybe you have a prayer request, and you say, Hey, we want you guys to pray for me or pray for this. Hey, send that to us in an email. Hey, why don't you invite other friends to join us? You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and also share it on social media. You can follow our church on social media at Facebook and also at Instagram. We hope you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week on New Life Baptist Children's Church.